get this started now It's the same feeling I always see What's going on? What's going on? It's your boy Jay Johnson, man Just taking y'all on a journey about life You know, where I didn't have nothing To where I got something now And I just want to show people like Change is for the better Like, if you only believe in what God got in store for you You know, just accomplish your goals Set goals and each one you chase, just make sure you prosper in it. Like about change, you know, like a lot of people say people can't change, but here's a living life story. Like I want to take you around and just show you some things like where I came from and where I'm at now. So right now we over on South 41st Street. It's a house that I bought in a neighborhood where I want people to know like it don't matter where you live, you can live comfortable anywhere. A lot of things go around. Things go wrong around the world, so it don't matter where you live at, Prospect, St. Matthews, West End, East End, things still happens around you, so, like, we, I just bought a house and flipped it, and then I'm about to sell it, but, you know, I want people to understand, like, it's minimum wage, you can live, still live good, it's just how you want to live, you know, so, just check this out. Where I was born, like I was in the neighborhood, and the neighborhood that I was in was like, it, it, it was it, it wasn't the top neighborhood that I really wanted my family to be in. My mother and daddy always wanted to be out. Like, why are we in the West End living? Like, you know what, how we living? So, you know, like I just wanted people to see this right here. Like, hey, it's it's it's, it's better off to live the way you choose to live instead of having things that you ain't gotta be a part of in life. Just gonna ride for a minute, just gonna take y'all around for a minute. You know about life, man, cause it's been real hard, like seven, five brothers in one house, man, and a mother and a father in a four bedroom house, man, like, I just, I just, I feel good about life now. You know what I mean? It seemed like I, I, I accomplished a lot of goals that that I've set, that I really wanted to do in life. And so, like, I just, I just really, 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 really thank God for the blessings that he's given me. Like, a lot of people are like, man, how did you change so quick and so fast? Because I did that because I wanted to better my kids and my family. Like, I didn't want to be the person locked up. I didn't want to be the person on the street corners. I knew it was another way, you know what I mean, on how to make it in life, you know what I mean? So I took the time out and went to college. And as I went to college, I always told myself, I, I don't want to work for nobody. And you know, while you said you don't want to work for nobody, every day you got to build yourself up. Like, I can't work for nobody, I can't work for nobody. But really in life, like, one day you're going to have to work for somebody. So in my goal of life, like, I haven't worked for nobody. Like, I've, when I graduated college with a, a bachelor's degree, I went right back and got another associate's in administra administrative of science, which has something to do with, like, being a teacher and um, being a part of the school network. So I just, I just want y'all to go on this journey with me. Like, this is a deep journey. This is something that I wanted. You know, my partner, Ant, you know what I mean? Street credit. Give a shout out, man. Glory to street credit. Like, this is something that I always wanted to do to show people, like, nah, hey, Jay, Jay Johnson is, hey, he, he, he came from nothing, man. And, you know, why coming from nothing? Like, this, hey, it been hard out here. You know, during the COVID right now, like, I'm still maneuvering. And I thank grace and thank God that, you know, I haven't been attached to the COVID. You know what I mean? So, it's about how you keep yourself. I keep my mask at all time, you know. Um, I tell other people, you know, I try to enforce them, like, man, keep that mask on no matter what. But this life journey that I'm taking you on, like, just just stay tight and, you know, just just be on the journey with me as we, as we cruise, you know what I mean? So just being able to sit back and do my own documentary like, you know what I'm saying? This is about life. You know, I ain't have a piece of jewelry. I ain't have a watch. I ain't have a necklace. I'm like, I'm looking at everybody like, man, damn, how can I, you know what I mean? Listening to the people like, man, this is, 
the Rolex game. People wanted a Rolex. I always heard like different cultures of people like, man, that's what it is. We gotta get us a Rolex. We gotta get us a Rolex. So I was able to finally get a Rolex, but, that, but just having it, that don't, I thought it was gonna change my life, but it didn't change my life. It basically just made me more of a, a stronger person to know like what I, a goal that I set. I wanted a watch, I got a watch. I wanted some jewelry, I got some jewelry. I wanted to be a teacher, I became a, a substitute teacher. Like every day I'm setting goals and I'm still setting. So right now I'm setting another goal of, of a, a record label. You know what I mean? So uh, it was it was hard. Like five brothers, man. We hey, it was pro wings. It was you know uh, shoes that never had a name to them. You'd just be like, man, going to middle school. People like for real. What are those? When they was really saying, man, what are those? And like I really couldn't tell nobody what it was because hey, it was it, it was hard for my mother and father. Like my father stayed working at GE. He never gave up. You know. Even though, you know, like, he, him and my mother had split it up. And my mother was then the mother and the father of five boys. You know, growing up in a house, bills was hard. And, you know, I'm in the middle. I'm the middle child. So just feeling like the middle child, like, I was less to get things. I wasn't the one that really was capable to, you know, get a pair of Nikes when Jordans came out. I wasn't really the one that get Levi's, when Levi's came out, I was like, I was in Wranglers and no names. Like, it wasn't even a name. So, you know what I mean? Like, the, the brothers that I had, like, made sure, like, went and sacrificed. And like, man, you know what, I'm gonna get a job, whether they worked at McDonald's or whatever. And one day, like, I did, like, I had to go out and try to work at McDonald's until they told me to take the trash out. You know, it was a dirt ball game going on, and when they told me to take the trash out, you know, I came down here to this uh, dirt ball, and uh, I just walking around, and Mr. Cornell was like, man, um, who you playing with? I'm like, man, I ain't playing with nobody. I just basically just got off, you know, work, and just came there because I ain't had nothing to do, cause caught the Broadway bus. So, like, it, this was a, another journey that I really wanted to take, you know what I mean? So. Hey, it's rough. It was hard, man. It was hard. Real life hard. Like, this was the part that we was in, you know what I mean? When I finally got out the tarp, you know what I mean? And came down here and, you know, Mr. Cornell Bradley, you know, put me in the game and said, man, y'all want you on my team. This is when the team that he had the straight shooters, you know what I mean? So when he had the straight shooters, I, I, I jumped right on the team. You know, me, Junebug, we was, hey, it was, it was old school that I was playing with, but I was the youngest one. And I had great talent, you know, just coming out of Air Course. And you know what I mean? So we just really, I just wanted y'all to see like, man, this is this is a journey that I took. This is a chance that I took to come out here and try to get on a team and play. And after I was with Cornell, I started my own team called Get Money. And uh, Get Money was a big team. Like we had shirts, we gave out t-shirts i mean we gave out food we barbecued like we did everything we wanted to do you know what i mean why in having the dirt boat team we won two championships you know if you look in the um i said bang book i'm in the i said bang book i said bang you know i'm in our um just you know just basically just working my act you know what i mean so they wanted my footage of like, where, where, how'd you get a part of the dirt bowl? And I told him, like, if it wasn't for Mr. Cornette Bradley, you know what I mean? I said, bang, like, I wouldn't, you know what I mean? It would have been just me just out here at Agonga Park and just running around. So I felt like Cornell grabbed hold of me, you know what I mean? And brought me over to this life. And from there on, man, I just started, you know, hooping again, you know what I mean? Which I was going to college and I was like, man, I gotta, I gotta do something. Like, I don't want my, kids to just grow up and not have a father with a great education. You know what I mean? So it, it, it made me more better of a man too. You know what I mean? When I first had my son, I knew then I had to, hey, I had to sacrifice. You know, and when you sacrifice, it's meaning like you giving up everything to go out here and put your all into to see what comes back. So as I'm putting my all out here in my city, I see what comes back. I see that 
you know, the the court, you know, got um, nice things done to it. We finally got glass backboard rims and things like that. So, you know what I mean? Like, I really appreciate just having the dirt bowl in our city. You know, that's something big that everybody was looking forward to to come out here and become a star on this court. And I was already that star. I just came out here and put my work in and became a champ, you know? So it was, it was, it was, it was, it was real nice, man. I just appreciate just living this life that God gave me. Man, what they, what they seen, I was, a, I was in the audience for a minute, you know, but when I got on this court, man, I was a star. Like I mainly just was a scorer. Like I wanted the other people to, to be the person like throwing the ball off the backboard even though I'm by myself on a fast break. I wanted everybody to get that look like, well, you know what, this, this is what's going on in Jay's life. Like I wanted, I was already a star and I knew the guys that was on my team were stars, but I wanted them to be about them because I was already in it, you know what I mean? So, you know, the layups, I'm free, I'm laying it up and you know what I mean? And just throwing it off the backboard, throwing out, throwing loops to people like, I, hey, it was the fun time for me. I wanted to be like an and one thing, you know, the and one team, you know, where you you give everybody else time, get that get they fame and uh, game back, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I'm just glad to be able to be part of this dirt bowl. And I said, bang in that book. If y'all ever want to see, you know, go look at the book. I said, bang. Yeah, yeah, I'm playing uh, a lot of the lessons mainly because I had the game and I wanted to give back to the kids. I wanted to to show the kids like once you step on the court like you got to be you got to be yourself. Don't try to be Jordan, don't try to be like nobody else. Be yourself into the game. So as I begin, you know, showing the mentor of the game to the kids, I still coach to this day like I love dealing with the the, the kids that's coming up 5 through 14, uh, you know what I mean? So just, just having that fame of just getting on the court, dribbling the ball between your legs, spinning, you know, shooting nice jump shots. It's, it's a teach game. Yeah. Man, we was good, man. We was uh, called Get Money. Y'all can look in the book. Y'all can look around. Called Get Money. Wore green and gold, gold, you know, white and green. It was always Get Money. Like, it was just part of, when I say Get Money, Get Money was just in the team of, like, we work, we Crime, we hustle, we, you know what I mean? We was putting effort in being on this court to show people like, man, hey, we coming to get this money. And getting the money was getting the ball and winning games to show people like, hey, we want it. Two, three championships, you know, name ringing, J-Rock, J, J-Rock, get money team, get money team. It was, it was hey, I, I built a lot off of this right here. Man, I played against great guys, Jason Russian, Jason Osborne. Um, um, uh, LaRon Mims, Ron House. Man, I played against some major people that was, you know what I mean, that had the greatest game in the city. Like, that was big time. I played against a lot of big time guys down here on the court and with my game and showing them, they was like, man, he's all right, he's all right. So I appreciate being able to play against great guys like them. Like, you know what I mean? The, Improve my game. Okay, I seen them dribble between the legs, spin. I'm like, oh, okay, I, that, that ain't nothing. So, you know what I mean? Just being out here and seeing great guys, you know what I mean? From University of Louisville, University of Kentucky, guys that's in the, the you know, NBA that came out, Derek Anderson. Like, I watched a lot of guys that, you know, that was in the game, you know, that was coming up. So, I mainly took it in. I mean, this was a part that, See, you ain't had nowhere else to go. Like, you didn't you didn't want to go Cox Park. You didn't want to go Wyandotte. You didn't want to go Algonquin. The, the meeting spot was Shawnee Park. Like, everything wanted to be in Shawnee Park. Like, meet, park your cars, as you see, you know what I mean? Like, it was really, this is really a great park, you know what I mean? So, this was the meeting spot. <laughs> you know what I mean? Your friends, your girlfriends, your friends friends the family get out here and barbecue pick a spot you know watch the games and stuff along with the juice bowl you know what i mean shiny park hey it, it's been going on for years you know it, yeah because like it's only 46 blocks 
You know what I mean? So as the 46 block, you you really don't have nothing else to do but just ride. And so like just seeing all of what I'm seeing, like I, I wanted the I wanted better things for me and my family. Like Louisville is a great city. I mean, this is a great city. Like no matter what they say, what goes on, the the murder raid, the robbery raid, the people that's locked up, like. It's still, it's, Louisville's a great city to be in. A lot of people come, you know, when they flooded them, Louisiana, whatever, they had that tropical that flood. Like, a whole lot of people was evacu evacuated to come to Louisville, Kentucky. So, what well, might have, you know, just taking my time in life. Like, I was never a guy that was a speedy guy. Like, I never was a guy like, hurry up and rush through things, hurry up and do this, hurry up and get this done. In my mind, I was like, I'm gonna walk through it. Because if I run through it, like, I'm gonna have to come, I done missed something. So I gotta come back and if I fell in a hole, then I have to dig myself out. So if I walk through life and to see a hole, then I know how to maneuver around it or go over it. But if it's too long or too wide or too deep, then shit, I knew not to try to jump over it. I knew to wave my way around life. So, you know, like being on that court, like it really was some appreciative things of, man, you gotta go get it. You gotta go get the basket. You gotta go get the ball. You gotta get points. You gotta show the crowd that you you can, you can you do have some type of basketball game or knowledge about game. So, you know, like basketball, being in that dirt bowl really, Led me in my mind like, man, I gotta, I gotta change some things up. I better change life before life changes me, and I didn't want life to change me. I wanted to change my life. Yeah, I mean, it was a lot of influence things. Like, a lot of people was, you know, saying, come on, let's go here. Let's go to the Velvet Rose at 19 and 18, and let's, you know, let's, let's ride and go do you know, smoke or whatever, but my mind, like, man, I'm, my mind on something else. My mind was on getting through college. You know, it was times where I'd be with my people now, and we'd go to the club, and I got to be at a class at 6.30, 7 in the morning, and that was real rough, just leaving the club and then going to school. Like, biology class, you taking tests and sitting in the room and got your desk, and I'm looking like, man, I wonder if I can copy off dude's paper. But dude's paper ain't even like my paper. So he got an A paper, I got a B paper, dude got an A paper, and then you can't look up to see what was going on. So in my mind, like, I got to really tap in and um, start studying. You know what I mean? Instead of me wondering if I can look both ways and see what the answers was, if I did that, like, we got two different separate tests. So, you know, he had a different test, he had the same, these two had the same test, and my test was different. So I couldn't look past him to get the, uh -huh, to, to look at the test. So my, I said, nah, I ain't doing that no more, you know? So I had to basically just start focusing, start sitting back, start reading the book that I didn't really want to read 60 pages and remember every word that was, most of the main parts that was said. That, that was, you know, my mind wasn't on that. It was, being out here in the streets in the clubs at a young age. Yeah, some of them was like, man, come on. Because they their value wasn't like the value that I wanted in my life. Like, but they stayed behind me. Like they if I had to stay after four or five in the morning, I had to get up for class. A few of the guys didn't even really care. They wanted me to be sitting outside, you know, waiting on other things to go, what was the next thing, like being in a gang and shit, like, I mean, I was all part of all of that, but, you know, like, I was the one that took my mind and was like, man, I, you know what, I gotta go, you know what I'm saying, and I gotta, I gotta go now, because if I didn't go now, like, it, it would have been hell, like, I wouldn't been the J, the J-Rock, the mentor, the coach, the father, the brother, the clan, the, you know, I wouldn't have been that. I probably would have been like, hey, you know what? I'm on some bogus shit, and I ain't never want that in my life. I never did want to be on bogus shit. So me jumping off the porch at a late age, like, I was, everybody else, like, was 
Shit, they were older. They 50 and 52 right now, probably. You know, I'm 43, you know what I mean? But, you know, hey, it is what it is. I'm glad that some of my friends are still alive. Some of them are gone, but, you know, like, I mean, God got a number for everybody. You know, whether if it's to die of cancer or to, to, to whatever, it is, God's choice is for you. We all got numbers, you know what I'm saying? This is why I coach that. You know, my little league team, the Louisville Cowboys, Louisville Packers, you know, we was at Algonquin Park, you know, trying to raise kids the right way. So just giving y'all about life, man. Like, it ain't too hard to change if it's what you want. Like, if you a go-getter, you can, you can go get it. You can go get it, believe me. Like, I, hey, I didn't have nothing. to my about nothing. And still don't have nothing for real. But I got a mind of grace, a mind of of brotherhood, a mind of properties, a mind of a record label, a mind of five kids, a mind of, you know, just just being that alternative father that I need to for my kids, trying to show them a way. Like right here, I'm, you know, I'm gonna pull over, you know, so y'all can see, like this is the neighborhood that I really grew up in. You know what I mean? This was, this was, where we got it, this is what we really did, you know what I'm saying? This house right here, this is 2325 West Burnett, it all happened right here, you know what I mean? And I'm gonna give y'all a little, you know, show them what it looked like right now, but hey, I, I wanna buy this house. If I knew, owned it, I wouldn't mind putting a little barber shop or something right here that, you know, to have in life for my kids and stuff when they get older. Man, a lot of time, and you know, it's right here, bring tears to me, but I'm, it never say a man don't cry, you know, but right here is where it was hard, man. It was real hard. I never knew that we was gonna come up out of this house. I thought we'd be here to the day. We still out here today. My heart, my joy, my pain, my sorrows, the feeling of, of life, of what I was gonna come out to be when I came out that door. Like, was I really gonna be um, a, a, a boss, or was I gonna be, you know, uh, a manager? Was I gonna be just what, I didn't know what I was gonna be, you know? But in life, like, when every day I came out that door, I was always like, God, whatever your, whatever your choice is for me to do, like, that's what I wanna do. So, this is the house that me and my brother, and mother and father, we grew up in, man, called, man, it was a sacrifice. I wanted to go to bigger schools and all that, but in this district, it wasn't number Air Course High School, so, you know, I took what it was and made it out to be what I really wanted it to be, and, I, you know, I gave it my all, you know, had a scholarship to a school called Sue Bennett. It was a school in London, Kentucky, a little JUCO college. But I never gave up. Like, I never gave up. I ended up leaving the JUCO to come back home because I told them, like, man, lied to my mother and my brother. Like, man, these people down here stabbing people with pencils just to get away from town. Or, like, it was when I pulled up, when I came home from school, I didn't even pull up. But when I rolled past and seen everybody out here playing football, this was a street that we played touch football every day. Played tackle in the yard right here, like, when I pulled up, I got in the backyard and was in the alley. Let, told dude, let me out right here. I had my refrigerator, my clothes, and all that. Went through the back door, and everybody like, you know, it was a, it was, it was some funny shit. Like, man, what are you doing? Like, why are you back home? Like, man, they down there stabbing people with pencils and stuff. Like, I don't want lead poison. I didn't know, but I, it was a lie. It was a joke. It was a, a, a myth. It was a story that I wanted just everybody to know. Like. Man, I just didn't really want that college life right now. I wanted to be home with everybody else, you know, playing football, touching in the streets and running around, playing tag and how I go get it and all that at a young age. Yeah, well, like, because my brother's name was, when I had my son, my first son, like, she led out, she was out air course in the projects and I'd catch the bus back and forth from air course after practice and stuff. So when I didn't come back down here for a while, I stayed away. And that's when I knew then, I was like, man, I'm out here, but down there is like gravity, like they, 
it was a lot going on, so you had to be in it. You know what I mean? You had to be with walking to the bus stop, partying. It was a club called the bus stop. We sitting out there. They drink, you know, like my my family and friends. They kind of older than me, so they'll sit out there and drink and kick it. And you know, I'll be the one that just sitting there, just looking around, hoping life will get better for me. So it took time. Like man, I don't want that no more. I don't want that. So when I came back from JUCO, Sue Bennett. Uh, transferred to JCC. When I went to JCC, like I did a year in a guy named Mr. Reginald Meeks. I remember him. I never forget these names. And Mr. Reginald Meeks, I went to U of L and was like, well, you have to do at least two years at JCC before I can get you to transfer to U of L. So it took my transcripts to do one year um, at JCC. Then my grades was real high and I went to Mr. Meeks again. Reggie Mix is like, man, I want to, you know, I want to be in, I want to come to this school. So he's like, let me check your transcript. So the transcript was official. And he was like, well, next year, once you're done with this year, the last year of JCC, you can come to U of L. So I never gave up on not just graduating. So when I got done with U of L, I graduated and went to, you know, another school. And when I went to that school, it was National College of Business. And when I went to NASCAR College of Business, I did two and a half years for a social degree there. So, like, I never did want to give up. Like, I never did. Like, you know what I mean? I wasn't going to give up. Like, no matter what I had to do, in my mind, Jay, you can't give up. So I went to four schools. I went to uh, uh, Sue Bennett in London. Went to JCCM Broadway. Went to U of L. Went to National College of Business and, and graduated the two, you know. And now look what life is building up on me. Like, I ain't going back. I ain't going back to that life to where, you know, the, 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 the streets and being out here and being with the wrong group. I, I, I left life alone, you know, lost a friend and turned my whole mind. Like, man, I ain't dealing with nobody. Like, it's over. Like, in my situation, I don't want to deal with nobody. So I really want y'all just to, you know, take a walk, you know, look at the crib with me and just, you know, a little tour. You walk to each fence, man. Yeah. You gotta know it ain't nothing but grace. Man. You just, you know, want to show you what shit, man. This was the house, man. It's the house that, you know what I mean? The nigga stayed in. You know what I mean? Laid in, you know. Uh, man, what it do? What it do, man? <laughs> you know, we just here, man. Just wanted to show y'all, like, this is where the family lived at. Like, this was hard, man. This was. I mean, the house of five people, like, everybody knew about this house. Everybody, when you wanted to come and sit and play, like, I'm going to take you on a journey. Like, you came and wanted to sit and talk, and, you know, everybody wanted to just hang out. That's what's going to happen the whole neighborhood. Like, you fight, you're going to get in this front yard, and you're going to fight it out, and then you're going to hug it up later. Not, but it, this was joy. Like, I call this house joy because it, 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 it built me to be a man. This is where I became a man at. Like, I didn't become a man just being out here in the streets. I became a man inside his house, being with five brothers of mine, four brothers of mine that, you, know, you ain't going out like that, bro. You know what I'm saying? We're gonna get it all in here, the fighting, the arguing, the, the telling jokes on each other, and, you know, mama, you know, raising all five of us by six. Like, this, 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 this was something that, if you ever had a house and you left everything in there, hey, it's all in there still because ain't nobody ever lived in there besides us. You know what I mean? So we just, this is basically where everything was brought up for us at. Man, shit, we lived here, shit, I'm 40, shit, it was about 20 years ago, 20, 24 years ago, man, we lived here. Like, this was the house that, you know, everybody wanted to spend the night at. And I had football players that was Caucasian, white, black, orange, blue. Like it didn't matter. Like they, they came here and stayed. Like they lived there. Like this house right here was momentum. This is where you come and get the momentum to, to build your life up. So you know what I mean? This, this, this was some rough shit here. Man, my room, shit, see if we can take a little walk right here, man. Probably not. Shit. I don't know, but I'm going to back here in the back. Back there on this shit, man. I don't know what shit. 
Back here, man, this was the room. They boarded it up though, but like this was what I lived in. Like it was problems and things like people breaking in, you know, when we wasn't here thinking it was money in the house, but it was never that. Like we just lived, man. We didn't we sacrificed to go to 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 school and work, you know what I mean? But mom, you know, they had different windows. My room was right here. Like it was a window right here. You know what I mean? We all, me and my little brother, we shared a room and the other three, they had their own room, so, you know what I mean? It was, hey, now you see what it is. Like, this is where the, they hang at now, the old cats, you know what I mean? They chill, they relax, but it was a garage right there before they tore it down, but, man, I'm talking about, man, this house right here is built apart. Built, of a, built in, with a legacy behind it, you know what I mean? Like, everything you wanted to do, hey, I did it out of here, man. Like, it was a basement right here, a cellar. Like, man, I missed the shit out of this house. I wish I could buy it today. Huh. He was a little short, bad-ass kid. Yeah. But look at him now, he kind of grew up now and trying to be, be somebody. Like yeah. And out doing hard things like drugs, robbing, raping, all, all that crap. Well, you know, when I went to school, I always said, I, like I said, I didn't want to work for no one because I didn't want to be on anyone's clock for six and seven dollars. So I took it in my own, like, when I graduated and got my business management degree, I went ahead and stuck my head out there and grabbed a lawnmower. I had a push lawnmower and a weed eater. And I used to always put it, I had a little pickup truck and I started cutting grass and that made me build. So as I started building, like, I um, I went and got a trailer, small raggedy trailer. And people was like, man, you you cutting a lot of grass. I'm like, man, shit, that's how society is. When grass is high, you gotta get it cut. It's like getting a haircut. You want, it, your, you want your, 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 your stuff to look great. So, you know what I mean? So I went and after that, I went and got me a, um, a business. Uh, a lady that owned Sins Car Wash, Sins Body Shop, offered me to rent the building out. And when I did that, like I started washing people's cars. Like I had a nice fan base of cars, so the people's grass that I was cutting, I would put it in with the deal. I put it in with the deal to get something. And um, so that's what, you know what I mean? It was based up on, man, just getting me a car wash and making it happen. Like I knew like when I was cutting a lot of grass that it was another goal that I wanted. And uh, so I became to wash cars. And as I was, as I started washing cars and we're gonna slide up on this real quick so I can get a little footage. Like I already knew to get a bank card. Like I never knew about a bank card. Everybody's like, man, you need to get a bank card. You need to get a bank card. So once I had established a bank card and started really going to the banks and putting money in the bank it started accumulating like it wasn't much. I might have two, three hundred dollars in there, but, and, but it led up to fifteen hundred dollars. So each time that I started to to put money in in the business, like it opened the door up for another business. So as you see, like this is the car wash. I'm gonna, you know, slide up on it real quick for a minute. So. So this was, a, uh, this was a car wash that I own right here, you know? So I basically like, I already knew like, this is something that I wanted, but the intentions of owning your business, like you gotta be business minded. You don't wanna just go with, oh man, I'm, a, I'm ready to open this business up. I'm about to do this. Like one day at a time, like stay focused on that one business. Like it was lawn care for two years. It was car wash for two years. It was real estate for six years. It was um, being a promoter for 15 years. Being a, a, a manager of a record label 
one year. So each year, like in life, I, I set them, whether if it was 5, 10, 15, 20. But in, in life, like you always want to manage your money and your time on, be, and, and on doing business. Great business with people kept my name going good. So every time that I did great business, man, you know what? Go over and cut the church. Go over, I'm gonna send somebody over to wash your car. Go over, I want you to bring the Louisville to do a concert. So the guys now, like, I got a good name. So the good name brings loyalty. Like, a lot of people don't understand loyalty is everything. Like, I stayed 100. Like, I never had to cross no one for no reason. I never had to go and be like, you know what, dude ain't like it. I never had to do it. Like, unless it's my family, like, bro, look, don't fuck with cuz, cuz cuz might not pay you your money back if you lend it to him. But I always just wanted life to be respectful for me and and to, for my kids. So when they growing up, it's yes, sir, no, sir. Everywhere I went, my daddy looked at me. If I didn't say, I still to this day say yes, sir, no, sir, to anyone. Yeah, it was a time that I wanted to do it. Like, after believing in three guys that I was, you know, being a part of, like, their dream was, man, I want to, I want to, I want to be an artist. So my son, he's like, daddy, I want to become an artist. So in my mind, it's like, man, let me, let me get him, let me get him to be an artist. So when I did that, I felt like that the music was, was up, upcoming. So I always wanted to be, I see a lot of people like, man, this is my record label. This is my label, this is my label, but they was all faulty. It wasn't the real record label, but now you look at what I got going on, like the record label is strong. Like you can look dead into that and be like, man, J-Rock the label. Man, that's a, that's a true label. Like it ain't nothing funny about it. it ain't no bull jive on it, like publishing. And I can uh, grab hold or, you know, sign anybody I want to, but it, I just wanted to set goal after goal and being a record label, man, it was my intentions. Like, my bro Wayne, Lil Wayne, J-Rock Entertainment, like, he was always like, man, let's do a party. So we was, we had Louisville on lock. We was right behind Big Don MJ Entertainment. We was the second hottest promotion, promoters in Louisville, you know? So when it was real Billy's and Joe's and, you know, uh, Another club called uh, Fourth Street. Man, we was we was doing our thing. Man, we brought a lot of people from from um, from Gotti. We brought um, Gorilla Zoe. We brought Young Dro, Plaz, Pleasure P. Like we brought we brought we brought a lot of people to the city, man, to give Louisville something to engage in too. Like you know, a lot of people are doing probably some other shit, but to bring everybody together, I'm the type, I want to bring everybody together to have fun. So no matter if we made all the money back or which we wanted to make the money back, we might, couldn't make the money back, but we did anyway. You know what I mean? So life is, is, is promised to you only how far you want it to go. Um, mainly to get these guys a, a deal. Like, I'm good. Like, I want to see these guys happy like they happy they we've been in miami we've been to atlanta we've been to houston we've been to chicago you know and it's great guys great guys that i'm dealing with i'm dealing with lil wayne uh b hen uh rockstar mateo like these guys like is really putting in hard work like to get a deal you know what i mean which we already as independent artists we got the deal I just want them to be the deal that is is better for them as well as for the label. And we actually got a real label though, like yeah. we doing real label work. You know what I mean? It ain't just like though, you know, people say they got labels, but what are y'all doing though? Are y'all really handling y'all business, the paperwork? Are y'all, you know what I'm saying? Like stuff like that. We really yeah. have a, a label label. It's crazy. So it's dope. It's super dope. Shout out to J Rock, man. He been making stuff happen. It's, it's 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 dope, though. It's dope. What makes what makes your label unique, and and what makes you satisfied to be in that situation? What makes us unique is like it's really the family. It's we it's a family like type of atmosphere. Like, cause 
it's a lot of it's well, I say it's a lot of us, I mean as a whole. Like it is I know it's us as a label, but like we got brothers, cousins, sisters, kids, everybody support everything we do. So if we have an event, the whole everybody's family gonna be there. So I, I would probably say the family part of it is the most unique part of it for me. Yeah. I, I say the same. Forever. Mm -hmm. He's one. He is one, so Yeah, and we and it's like they all work with us as well too. Mm -hmm. Like like they'll like, help us sell shirts, uh, get this, do this, like it's just like a family thing. Like right? mm -hmm. it's crazy. Well the challenge has been like the it's virus, the coronavirus. It like it really put a toll on people's families, man. Like a lot of people don't like I tell my artists like we don't have to be nowhere we don't want to be. We stay masked up. No matter if you stay masked up or whatever, you still may come in contact with it, you know? So just being able to stay in the studios is when the virus hit is what really made, you know, the outcome of things how you really want it. So we really worked hard in the studios day every day, day after day after day. Like we never did like, was non-stop, like we couldn't stop. Like everything we had to do, we had to keep it pushing. You know what I mean? We had to make be people believe like, man, they really are moving, which we really we really was moving. Like, but in a studio with new music. So now we have a lot of music going on and you know what I mean? It's, it's, hey, it's, it's going good for us. Uh, you know, I was a little league coach for a long time and you know, they seen the wins one of my coaches, you know, at Dawes High School, he seen the, my background. And you know, there's a lot of people saying my name, like, man, he's a great coach, he's a great coach. So he brought me in to be the freshman coach at Dawes High School of Coach Hawkins. Coach Hawkins was a great coach, a great friend of mine. And uh, he, he really opened the doors for me. Like, so when I became the, the freshman coach out there, I was the, also the offensive line coach out there for varsity. Like freshmen went nine and one, JV went like ten and two, and we won numerous of games. So it, it, it was a blessing to be away from Little League, but I wasn't away from Little League because I was the president. But I just went on because the door was open. And God I always say, if I open the door, you you know, you seek, you find. So when I went through the door, like it was just a, a blessing to me. Like I mean, was coaching. Uh, Coach Hawkins got me in to be a substitute teacher. I did that for two years. Um, also, we just doing the two years. Uh, I coached with coach, a great coach, a great college player, uh, Tony Williams. Um, we, we did great things. We went to um, a two-year um, championship game at um, University of Kentucky. I was able to sit on the bench where K, Coach K and um, other coaches had sit at, and I was able to sit and coach alone. Like I said, I was more than a, a coach. I was a mentor, I was a father, you know, hood figure. Like, I gave kids, I gave it to them raw. Like, don't go out there doing silly things. Like, be yourself, because you can be influenced in a lot of things. Like, when you like, being a kid, like, it takes just one time to do something. And there, there's your whole life. Like, your life can be just crashed. So I always would tell them, like, if you need me, just ask me. You don't have to go take, steal, rob, or nothing. And a lot of kids follow the lead way. Like, there's kids right now, like I was able to coach my nephew, Corey Johnson, after I did my three years at Dallas. Um, I spoke with Coach uh, Scroggie, um, and he pulled me in there essentially with my nephew, Corey Johnson, who's now um, a running back at uh, Union College University. great coaching life experience and being known and being able to get a call like here come on down to Central I want you to be a part of the Yellow Jacket so I came down here to Central and was a part of a nice winning season like we went and uh, played at Western Kentucky for the championship but we you know we fell short but just being able to get calls like Coach Hawkins called me from Little League to be a Dawson Coach Squires called me from Dallas 
to be a central. And we gave, I gave a lot into the situation that transferring schools and letting kids know I'm still in your life. Like, if you ever need me, all you got to do is I'm, I'm at Central. I'm at Iconco Park coaching. Just let me know what you need. You got my number and and things like that. And as Coach Cries had retired, I mean, he didn't retire. He mainly went to a new school called DeSales and doing big things and great one is over for those kids also. Uh, a guy came to Central named Mr. Marvin Dantzler. And... Um, he, his staff was to pick his own staff, and this is what was so crazy that I was the only staff, I was the only coach that he kept, and that meant a lot to me, and that meant like brother, real brotherhood for me being young. Like I was the youngest coach out of all the coaches, you know, to coach, and I was kept to be on a championship team. So like when Coach Dantzler got here, like he. He turned the whole program around again because Coach Crabbe was already a champ. He was already winning games like six-time state championship. And uh, when Coach Dantzler got here, like, I'm fighting for a ring. I'm fighting for a championship because I've been around. I won numerous of championships in Little League, but just coming up being uh, a running back coach, a wide receiver coach, a line coach. I was never on defense. I'm an offensive guy, so... I love the game about offense. I love the score. And uh, Coach Dancer brought me in to be the freshman and JV uh, head coach, along with being the running back coach for uh, varsity and special teams. And, man, he's just been a blessing, man. Like, God just, you know, dug inside my soul and my life. And just was like, this is the man I want you to be. I don't want you to be this type of man. I want you to be this man right here and I follow this word like I'm not going back on it like everything I do is prospering like with houses real estate uh two to three degrees of barber I went to barber school like it's just been sacrifice after sacrifice so I just want the world to know like man it, hey if you got a penny that penny can turn you into $500, the 500 can turn into $10,000. The $10,000 can turn into 50,000. The 50,000 can turn into 100 and 200 and 300,000. So it's just like, just set a goal, set set goal after goal and accomplish this first goal, knowing that you got a goal up here and a goal up here and a goal up here. Just go point by point. That way you'll, be, you'll accomplish each goal. So, yeah, so being with Mr. Marvin Dancer, like, won a state championship, you know what I mean? So, if you see now, like, I got the ring, you know what I mean? And it's a blessing just to be able to wear a state championship ring, you know what I mean? So, people look like, what type of rings are those? I'm like, man, these are state championship rings, you know what I mean? So, I really want to, you know what I mean, just let y'all know, like, man, breathe yourself. It's like breeding dogs to being grown dogs and you know what I'm saying, knowing things in life. So just, just, just stay dedicated, man. Stay dedicated. Oh, man, it's been great. First of all, he's all about the kids, so that's the main thing. The kids love him. The parents, he has a good rapport. He's a Louisville guy. He, you know, he's well respected in the community. All those things are really great, especially for a guy like myself who's not from here, to have somebody like him who's uh, so respected throughout the city of Louisville. Well, you know, you, you always just need somebody, one who can, first of all, he knows his stuff for as a coach, so that helps. But then you always need someone who can always be even kill, you know, so, uh, you know, during a championship run, it's intense. And, you know, somebody has to, you know, we have to get them ready to play. But at the same time, you got to have somebody who can go over there and love on them as well. So Coach does a great job of both. You know, he uh, he coaches his position. You know, he coaches our running backs uh, during that championship run. But at the same time, he was able to uh, really keep those guys focused on, you know, hey, it's not personal, it's just business. We're just, we're just playing football, and we all have the same goal. Right? Well, one, he's, he's very active. So that's one thing, you know, help him with the barbershop. Uh, you know, every year they do something for back to school where they let the kids come in and get free haircuts. 
Uh, you know, if I if I need to feed him, you know, I can call coach and let, even if it's last minute, he's gonna work something out for me. You know, and uh, it's not not just him, but the whole Johnson family as a whole, just great people. So I've been really blessed to uh, to you know to meet some really good people. Uh, during my short time here in Louisville, and uh, Jay's right at the top of that list. Yeah. But I'm I'm uh, I'm originally from Louis I'm originally from Louisiana. Uh, you know Monroe, Louisiana is uh, where I'm from. Uh, spent 12 years coaching in Oklahoma. I uh, had a lot of success there. Uh, then I took a job back home, and then eventually I landed this job at Louisville Central. So you know, uh, like many successful coaches, I'm just blessed to be in great places around great people with great athletes. Well, I think the one thing that helped me is that I've always been in this situation, so that's what a lot of people here didn't understand, replacing such a legendary coach and uh, Coach Scargins. But, you know, I went into a Booker T program with very high expectation when I was my first head coaching job uh, as a football coach, and I replaced a lot of great legends there. Uh, when I was in Oklahoma City as a track coach, I replaced the guy who won 17 state championships. So I had been in those situations, and I, my advice to anybody who have to walk in those shoes is you got to be you. You know, you, you can't worry about uh, what was done before you. You have to be you, and you have to be the best version of you, and you have to uh, continue to try to do what the things that have made you successful. This is the love and the, the effort that I want to give people to look at like I can live in a bad neighborhood in a great house and live comfortable without me thinking negatively about things like keeping your house clean, uh, you know, picking up dirty socks, uh, just living great than what you thought you what you had at the beginning. No, nah, it just it, it just didn't happen overnight. When I got this house. And I looked at it, it needed windows, it needed, it needed all the part. That's like looking in the mirror and looking at myself, how I want to dress myself up. So for me to dress myself up, I looked at, all right, I need newer windows, take it out. The walls, I need newer walls for, I need ceilings, need wider ceilings, just to open my mind up like the, the grass is my feet, like I needed more grass to grow instead of have dirt and rocks and things just like that, just, just out in the yard. So at the end of the day, what what do you think will be the legacy of, of this label? The legacy? Yeah. We, we done it. We done it ourselves with no help. We done it from the, we like, we actually done it from the ground up, literally. Started with a thought. J-Rock said, look, start this label. You see, and that's just what it was, you know what I'm saying? I thought, I thought he was bullshitting. I thought, I thought J-Rock was bullshitting when he got me, he said, nephew, I'm gonna start me a label. <coughs> I said, shit, you ain't start no label. <laughs> <laughs> I kid you not. That man started the label, and like, it was going crazy ever since. Mm -hmm. I, I promise you, like, it's crazy. I, I would have never thought. I would have never thought. Yeah, and, now, and I wouldn't have either, though. Because how, how me and Rock met, we met through me singing. You know what I'm saying? It was just like, man, Nick can sing. You know, who you got backing you up? Every time you see me, who you got helping you up? Who you got? I'm just like, man, it's just me. I mean, I got people doing little stuff. But I've been doing it by myself for a while. I mean, I had people helping me you know, along the way. But he was just like, man, nice, man. We can, we can do something with that. And then one thing turned into another, and then here we are now, yeah. together. We've been doing it together for a minute, and ain't, and, and ain't stopping either.